Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat. Let's see what's making news. The Australian Space Agency is calling on Aussies to help name its new lunar rover. Here's Justina with all the details. In a few short years, Australia's first lunar rover will blast off to the moon on board NASA's Artemis mission in search for lunar soil. Introducing... Uh... <clears throat> okay, so it doesn't actually have a name yet. That's why the Australian Space Agency has just launched a nationwide competition to try and find one. What we want is something that's exciting. We want people to, to really feel involved in what is Australia's boldest adventure yet. The competition's open to individuals and schools across the country. And all you need to do is choose a name, explain why you chose it and enter online. So, any thoughts? If I could think of a name, it would probably be about the Matildas since it's related to Australia. I'd probably choose White Wombat because wombats, I think they're pretty cool and the moon's white. Mackie Moo. Um, one, it's my name and also um, I got some um, ideas from this book called The Cow Tripped Over the Moon because we're obviously sending something to the moon. Members of the VTN show are an Australian animal. Ooh, I like that idea. The competition's open from now until Friday the 20th of October this year when four names will be shortlisted and put to a public vote. If my rover name was chosen, I think I'd be very excited and it would be very cool because a rover is something going to the space and I'm just down here. A new Qantas boss has landed. Vanessa Hudson stepped into the chief executive officer role today after the outgoing CEO, Alan Joyce, hit the departure lounge two months earlier than expected. The airline's been in a bit of hot water lately, including most recently a lawsuit from the ACCC accusing it of selling tickets for more than 8,000 flights that had already been cancelled. So Ms Hudson's been brought in early to help get things back on track and win back the trust of the public. We know that post-COVID, we haven't always delivered to what our customers expect, but we are listening and we hear what they are saying. Now to sport, and Novak Djokovic has broken another record, this time at the US Open. Here's Josh. The Joker has done it again. After cruising to a quarterfinal win against America's Taylor Fritz, he's now reached a men's record 47th Grand Slam semi-final, breaking his tie with old rival Roger Federer. Meanwhile, 19-year-old Coco Goff from the US is through to the women's semi-finals after beating Latvia's Jelena Ostapenko. And as for the Aussies, well, yeah, sorry, it's all over after our last hope, Alex de Minaur, went down to Russia's Daniil Medvedev yesterday. And the start of the AFL final season means we also have our nominees for this season's mark and goal of the year, including stellar work from GWS Giants forward Harry Himmelberg. That is a Himmelberg special! And this epic goal from Port Adelaide's Dan Houston. It's a long, long ball! But we're going to have to wait until Brownlow medal night later this month to find out who wins. Hmm, yes, impressive moves. <laughs> Now it's time to hold on, because this ride is about to get bumpy. <laughs> oh, goodness me. First up to a surfing snake on the Gold Coast. Yes, wrapped tightly around its owner's neck here, Shiva the Bredeli python seems to love getting out on the water. Videos of the pair have gone viral on social media, and while it does give some people a bit of a shock, others think it's pretty cool. The Gold Coast is no stranger to surfing animals, with ducks and bulldogs proving it's not just humans that can ride waves. Now to a bumpy artwork made out of thousands of recycled plastic lids. Students at a secondary school in Argentina put together this huge portrait of soccer superstar Lionel Messi with the caption, thank you, Captain. It's all to celebrate Argentina's World Cup win, the first in 36 years. And finally to Alice Springs, where the Red Centenats have served up a large dose of exhaust fumes and burning rubber. It's the only event in Australia that has a permit to let unregistered and highly modified vehicles drive on public roads. It's safe, it's well managed, the entrants know what they are allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. Making it a go-to event for all rev heads and car enthusiasts. <laughs> I'm going to stick to my bumpy road, thanks. That's what we've got time for today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>